On this special Christmas episode of System Integrators Weekly, you just took off the bow and ripped off the wrapping from your brand new pre-built PC. Let's go over the first things you need to do to get it set up. All that and more on this episode of System Integrators Weekly. Let's go, nerds! This episode of System Integrators Weekly is brought to you by CDK Deals. CDK Deals is an online marketplace that specializes in discounted, genuine Microsoft licenses and game keys for several different platforms. For the month of November, my viewers are getting the biggest discount of the year of 35% off with code BRAY25. That's Windows 10 Pro for only $13.60. Let's get a Windows key. We'll opt for Windows 10 Pro for the enhanced security features. CDK Deals offers an OEM license for a fraction of the price of a retail key. The difference with an OEM key is that you can only use it on one system, but that should be all you need. You will need to make sure you either have Windows 10 Pro already installed or you perform a fresh installation since OEM keys cannot be used to upgrade from Windows 10 Home if that's what you have installed currently. Here I use code BRAY25 to get 35% off. Now my copy of Windows is only $13.60. Pay with your method of choice and once the payment goes through, Click View Keys slash Codes. Click Get the Key and copy it. Then just go to your Windows search, type in ACT, up oh, there it is. Click Activation Settings. My Windows install was already activated, so I'll be replacing that key, but yours should just say Activate Windows. Paste in the key, click Next, and Activate, and you're done. Thank you, CDK Deals, for continuing to support the channel. Hello, everyone. I'm Brea Thorne, and welcome to System Integrators Weekly. It's a little different this episode because we are gonna go over what to do now that you've got your pre-built PC. Just getting it set up the first time. That's all we need to do here. So this system was sent to me by iBuyPower. I do have an unboxing and review video I'm working on for this one. It got delayed when I hurt my back with this actual uh, PC. So <laughs> that was a, a little while back, but we're gonna get that out to you guys as soon as we can. But for right now, we're using it. Thank you, iBuyPower, for sending the system. We're using it as a way to show you the steps to take once you get your system to you. This has been requested several times, not directly, hey, make a video about this, more like, hey, what do I do now? So we're gonna follow these steps and we're gonna get it set up. iBuyPower is kind enough to give you directions on how to proceed with every system. We're just gonna follow those, but we're gonna do it together. So first things to do, you wanna read the one that says important because it's important. It says the first thing is step one, removing the side panel. There's gonna be two screws right here. They are thumb screws. They are not captive screws, meaning that they don't stay in the panel when you take them off. Let's set these aside and not lose them. So to be clear, they say this is step one. Step one is uh, a different step, actually. Step one is taking it out of the box. And part of that step is not throwing away that box or the styrofoam packing material that came with it or the foam packing material that came with it or the foam we're about to take out of the system, which is a lie because there wasn't any because they had the um, GPU, the, uh, the Gigabyte Vision GPU that came with it in a separate box. That's not always gonna be the case. Uh, when they ship it to you, it'll likely have the GPU in there and it will have this Instapack, expanding foam to keep everything in place. This is default with every ready system that they ship out, unless they send it to you with the GPU in its own little box. The reason you wanna keep that is because you may wanna move at some point or ship the PC back for an RMA or anything like that. So you wanna keep the foam that's inside of it. You wanna keep the foam material that encases it and the box itself. In this one, you're going to pull back and you're gonna be supporting it as you do so because it will just fall right off when you do that. So let's do this. Actually, no, it does support itself on the bottom. So that is nice but barely, so be careful. While we have this open, what we're gonna do is we're going to check our connections. And you can expect that during the unboxing and review video, I'm gonna have more information for you on this particular model of case right here. And this is the, uh, the Hako version of this case, uh, the H-A-K-O version of this case, with the sort of, uh, I don't know, shattered look to the front glass. But yes, what you wanna do is you wanna get in here and check all of your connections, the 24 pin for power, the uh, power for the CPU up there, 
any fan connectors, you want to make sure that they are seated properly. If your case features a front USB-C, this one does not feature that on the case, but the, ma the motherboard has it, which is unfortunate that the case doesn't. You want to make sure that's seated. And of course, all your connections on the very bottom, like your front, H uh, your front HD audio, if that is connected, your front panel connectors, and of course, any USB 3.0 connectors as well. Just anything you see plugged into the motherboard, you want to make sure it's there. The power connectors for the GPU, of course, you want to make sure those are seated well and that the GPU itself is not loose in any way as well. The RAM, just push that in, make sure it hasn't come loose in shipping. You can even pop it out if you choose to, just like that. There it is. And then just seat it right back in. Now, to be clear, if you really want, support the back of the case, by the way, when you push the RAM in, you want those two clicks or a single click of both sides of it when you're putting that in. Um, you can skip this step if you want and just go to the next one. However, if you have any issues powering up, you're gonna wanna check all of those connections. You wanna make sure that your two RAM sticks, if you're in dual channel memory, which you had better be, are in the two and four positions of the four slots, the second slot and the fourth one, going away from the processor, which is right here, okay? That's pretty standard. And just also give your, uh, give your CPU block a little push and tug right there just to make sure that it's secure. And uh, yeah, everything's looking good. Everything looks great here. Now we get to go for the, the big one here. This actually is gonna show you uh, all the other steps to do, even though it actually goes over that step we showed there, it does, shows you basically the same thing on this sheet right here. Okay, now it tells you that you're gonna go ahead and want to connect things, okay? And it actually talks, talks about connecting your video and other peripherals first before you connect power. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll notice there's an HDMI connector here and a um, display port connector. You're not gonna use those. You're not using onboard video. You're gonna use your connectors here for your graphics card. Okay, now if you, if you have a gaming monitor that has DisplayPort, I recommend using that if possible. That's gonna be ideal and you can use your other connect, your one HDMI connector for another monitor or secondary monitor. You want your primary monitor to be on DisplayPort and you can actually just connect one to start off with if you want. If you really wanna start with a whole bunch of them, you certainly can, but you may have to do some reassigning of which is the primary monitor later on. Next, we're gonna get our mouse and keyboard that came with the system. We're gonna take those out so we can get them connected. Now, if you get a custom system from iBuyPower, you actually have the option, usually at a discount, to get their mechanical keyboard, the MK3 or something like that. I would say if it's, you know, gonna be five, 10, even $15, go for that. It is a fantastic keyboard for the price. It's actually got blue clicky mechanical switches, which a lot of people like. Um, I will say they have upgraded the mouse a bit since uh, when I bought my iBuyPower system. This has an, a little bit better weight to it, but it, it and it is, you know, an optical gaming mouse, but it's not going to break any records or win any awards. Uh, you do have two side buttons, two buttons right here, probably for raising and lowering your DPI, and a scroll wheel with your third click right there as well. It's got a nice feel to it, nice matte black and a little bit of RGB. Let's get these unwound right here and get them plugged in to our rear USB ports. You're gonna have several different types of USB here. Okay, you're gonna have a USB type C, right? It depends on the motherboard you have, by the way. Um, USB type C, uh, USB 3.2, uh, Gen 2 in the red there, and the blue should be USB, USB 3.0. Uh, and then regular USB 2.0. That's where you want to put your peripherals, okay? There you go. So you have those two in your USB 2.0 ports. These do not require anything beyond USB 2.0. And you've got your um, connector for HDMI in the GPU. I am not going to connect Ethernet just yet, okay? Now this motherboard though, I will mention, it does not have Wi-Fi. This system is the 5600X 3060 Ti system that I've recommended many times, and I did mention that it does not have Wi-Fi during several of those recommendations. It also just does not list it in the specs. If you need Wi-Fi, you can add it yourself. That is not a problem. I recommend an internal Wi-Fi card, a PCIe card, rather than a USB one. The internal PCIe Wi-Fi card is gonna be a lot better. Just make sure you have a slot available for that on the motherboard spec that you get with your system. 
And of course, here is our power supply down here. And they did the good thing, which is to actually switch this off. So you're gonna see a power switch down here that is a circle and a line. Flick it to the line once you have that power connector plugged in which is going to be this cord right here. So we have that power supply switched off. You got that plugged in there nice and tight. And yes, I did add a Velcro tie strap to this right here. This is so that you can take all of your connectors and just wrap them up. You could even take any slack that you're not gonna use just to cable manage on your desk a bit. And you can't really see this very well, but just trust me, I'm doing it. So then we switch this on. Now this system is hot. It is ready to be powered on. Of course, your power button is gonna be, on this case, right on the top right, right here. There we go. It's alive. Okay, so this is actually listed out on the back of your instruction sheet, right here. It takes you through all of the screens. Windows is designed so that anyone can pretty much install it. So you can literally just follow these instructions and you're good to go. The thing is we did not connect internet. So you're just going to create a local profile, okay? You don't have to create an, an actual Microsoft account if you don't wanna use OneDrive or any of those services. It might yell at you a little bit here and there. It's not a big deal. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. However, once you have connected internet, which you're going to do, right? Uh, you can go ahead and create a Microsoft account if you want to, and then use the OneDrive service and all of that. It's not exactly a bad service or anything. So that is completely up to you. There is something missing here. I, I don't have a desk pad. I got it. I got my trusty Artesian Builds custom Let's Go Nerds desk pad that you can get at uh, the URL that you see on the screen right now. These things are awesome and super high quality and like double stitched for this durability and just beautiful colors. Anyway, yeah, these are available and you can go get one. So it defaults to the United States. Cool, the US keyboard layout. Now, if this of course is not accurate for you, choose something else that is accurate, whatever is accurate for you. Like uh, cuddles might go with the CMS. I, I don't know if they call it a CMS, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and shorten it to that. But the Canadian multilingual standard, there's all kinds of options here. Thank you, Microsoft. Want to add a second keyboard layout? Skip, thank you. We are going to say, I don't have internet. And continue with limited setup. Oh no, that sounds terrible. But it's not. Hit accept because you pretty much have to. And this came with Windows 10. Now, your system may not come with Windows 10. A lot of the systems now are coming with Windows 11. Remember the sponsor I mentioned earlier, you can get yourself a Windows 10 license for like $13 and, and some change in the month of December because they continued November's awesome deal all the way through December 31st. So if you buy one of those licenses, you can, get the down, you can download the Windows Media Installer for free, get that license, Install Windows 10, just get rid of Windows 11 and install Windows 10 if that's what you want. And I do suggest that because Windows 11 is still being updated and fixed and it's not as scuffed as it was when it first came out, but that's just, it's still pretty new. Who's gonna use this PC? Uh, Braythorn. There we go. All right, so create a super memorable password. All right, memorable password. What was your childhood nickname? Mr. Nanya business. Now let's go ahead and turn off all of these. You can turn them back on. We don't want to send diagnostic data. You don't necessarily want them to tailor your experiences. This is all tracking information and just the like, add information, stuff like that. Not now, Cortana. Well guys, let's just, uh, this is when you can go grab a sandwich, um, have a little drink. You know what? Hydrate, everyone, drink some water. This PC features a Ryzen 5 5600X uh, 3600 mega transfers per second on the memory, 16 gigs of it, and a gigabyte 3060 Ti. This is the Vision version, and it's beautiful in white and silver, and I'm very sad that I have to send it back. It has a 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler on it with a 120 millimeter fan, and that is adequate for a 5600X. Uh, could be upgraded to a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which you could mount here on the top because there's a bunch of mounting points for fans, but it does have three RGB fans in the front, one in the back on that 120 millimeter AIO. You could always just get some, any fans you want, just add them onto there and just 
daisy chain them to or to your uh, to your other fans. You could even get yourself a PWM fan splitter like this one here, uh, if you so choose. It just takes one fan connection and makes it many fan connection. And by the way, when I talk about getting yourself a PCIe uh, Wi-Fi adapter, it's going to have a connection kind of like this, and it will slot in. You actually have to bend off these covers for the slots, for the PCIe slots, and break them off. There are uh, replaceable ones you can purchase off of Amazon, and there are screw holes there where you can actually screw those onto there. And it also has a one terabyte M.2 drive uh, right there in our M.2 slot under the heat spreader right there, right above the graphics card. There is a second M.2 socket right down here be between these two PCIe X16 connections there. There's a bunch of SATA connectors here as well that you can use if you wanna add you know, a mechanical hard drive for slower mass storage or a 2.5 inch SATA uh, SSD rather than an M.2 SSD for faster, but not as fast as M.2 uh, storage. So this is telling us that we should browse the web with Microsoft Edge, but I don't have internet. I can't do that. Oh, well, geez, maybe later Microsoft Edge. Not much in the way of bloatware, is there? Other than, you know, Microsoft bloatware with the, now they do have some Microsoft apps here. This is usually installed along with Windows 10 anyway iBuyPower is just going to try to take us to the iBuyPower website to have you put a review there. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Most of the reviews that are posted are when people have a bad experience. If you have a good experience, you'll actually benefit the industry if you share that good experience. It's not a bad thing to share a good experience. In fact, it's very much needed in this industry because everyone thinks, oh, iBuyPower is terrible because all the reviews I read are bad. It's because all the reviews people write are bad because they want to share the bad news travels fast. That's why they say that. Because people always want to share their bad experiences over any good experiences. It's just, just the nature of humanity. So when you have a good experience, please share that experience. Let people know because most people who buy iBuyPower systems have a fine experience and it's it's literally okay. It's just plenty of people in my community, the Swarm, have had great experiences with iBuyPower. My suggestion to you, join the Discord. If you want to cut through all of that nonsense and read about people who are actually having great experiences with their systems, join the Discord with the link in the description below, and then go to the Riggs channel. People post their systems there all the time saying, hey, it's running great. It's running awesome. Hey, what do I do? It's running a little hot. What do I do? Okay, we do this. Cool. It's running great now. Check it out, take a look, decide for yourself. Of course, if you're gonna be gaming or streaming, I recommend Ethernet 100%. It's gonna give you a better experience. If you cannot do that, then you can add in Wi-Fi yourself. So your Ethernet is going to be right here. Now this is gonna say, do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by other PCs and devices on this network? If you're using this at home, in a home environment, you can go ahead and hit yes because later on you can do things like shared folders and all that. So now that it has internet connection, it's gonna be setting up devices, setting up the keyboard and the, keyboard and the mouse. So that's, that's really it when it comes to the, the primary stuff, but we're gonna look at a few other things, like what we need to do. What we wanna do is we wanna to go to search and type in Windows Update. And then you can go to check for updates. Now we don't wanna go for Windows 11. This says we're up to date, look at that. Oh, it hasn't checked for a while. Never mind. I did get this a while back. Let's check for updates. So this, as of the time I received it, it was up to date. So there have been some Windows updates since then. You may find that when you go to check for updates, it is fully up to date. Now, if this, of course, is a ready system, it may have been sitting in a warehouse for a while and it can run, it just might just need a few Windows updates. That's not a big deal. Just go ahead and have this run those for you. We're gonna go ahead and leave those as they are. Uh, but GeForce Experience is a good way to keep your drivers updated and some of the drivers are specific to certain games. NVIDIA is really good about this. So if you don't mind that and you're not gonna be running a whole lot of applications that need all of your memory and stuff, you can run something like GeForce Experience and not have any bad experiences with that, not, not have any uh, negative repercussions. If this is strictly a gaming machine, it actually makes a lot of sense for you to have N NVIDIA GeForce Experience. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna walk you through downloading NVIDIA GeForce Experience. You know what, we'll use Microsoft Edge. Sure, guys. There we go. Thank you, autocomplete. Oh, cool, Bing, what everybody uses. 
So let's go ahead and get it done. Again, if this is a gaming machine, you can actually benefit from using GeForce Experience. You can close your browser and go ahead and agree and install. What it's gonna do is it's gonna see what cards you have, what drivers you have, whether they're up to date or not. And if they're not up to date, it will update them. Simple as that. Okay, so let's take a look at our drivers. Click on drivers and then you're going to, oh my God, stop. All right, download, there you go. It blocks the download button by saying, hey, your driver settings. Like, no, I'm trying to fix that. Anyway, so those are the two main things. Make sure your Windows is updated and that your video drivers are updated. After this, we can get to gaming. I mean, seriously, that's it. This is not the final form of the get, you know, how to, what to do with your system once you get it. This is not the final form of this video. That is gonna be much more elaborate and it's gonna be some awesome tips and tricks on what you can do there. But there is one extra thing I'm gonna show you guys here because uh, I've made no secret of this. Let's go for the express installation, sure. But yeah, I've made no secret of this, but this case does not have very good front uh, panel airflow. It's glass. Glass is not really porous. It's uh, not great for letting air through. So the thing to do here is to just pull it off. Installation is complete. Bam. Dunion rings, baby. You're good to go. You're ready to go. You can install Steam, start downloading your library. Um, if you only have the one terabyte, uh, be picky with all the games that you're going to choose. Try not to install a terabyte of games because you need room on there for your operating system. But adding storage is one of the easiest things you can do. And we're going to have a video on how to upgrade your system in specific ways. That's 2022 is going to be the year that if you're not familiar with PCs, you're going to become familiar with PCs, with upgrading them, modifying them, even repairing them, uh, if you so desire. So be sure to get subscribed. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that. Even, you know what, go the extra step. Click the little bell so that you get the notification like, hey, Braythorn posted a video. You probably want to see it because I'm going to do my absolute best and so is Cuddles. We're going to do our absolute best to make sure that these videos are as helpful to you as possible. Uh, there's going to be some fun ones too. Don't worry, we got some fun stuff coming up. But uh, we've also got some partners that are going to be helping us make these videos happen. So get subscribed. And if you want to boost this channel, if you can't do anything like going on the Twitch channel and dropping subs or going on the down to the little money symbol here and saying, hey, here's some money or whatever. You don't have to do any of that stuff. I'm providing this information for free. And that's you just have to watch some ads. And there you go. I'm able to do this for a living. But if you want to show your support, share the videos with people who you know like them. Drop a like on there. It actually does help. Uh, just those things right there don't cost you anything. And you might end up being a hero to someone else who's looking for a PC and is trying to find some straightforward, no-nonsense information on where to find one. I do apologize if you were hoping for a video on like, hey, look at this PC, look at that PC. But I figured a lot of people got PCs already for Christmas and that this might be a lot more helpful. Thank you to my wonderful helpful, awesome, sometimes trolling chat. It's fine, I don't mind at all uh, for giving me this suggestion. I knew in my heart of hearts it was the way to go once you said it, but I was like, ah, get a video up by Saturday. That's totally different for us, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna get this System Integrated Weekly video to you on Saturday, and it's gonna be awesome, and hopefully you're having very happy holidays, and uh, we're gonna have another System Integrated Weekly video for the new year. What I do have, though, is a great tip on how to get that better airflow for your system. The way to do this, okay, first off, you need to be really careful. You see this right here? I smacked myself with the corner of the glass on my head when I was testing this earlier to make sure I'd left the uh, mesh filter on there. So get this to the edge of a table. So get your hand under the front right here. There's a little opening right there. And hold it down with your other arm on the top and then hold the top of the, case, of the front panel with your other hand so it doesn't fly off. And then just sort of push your fingers against the end of the table there to sort of leverage the bottom of the front panel off. You can do it very carefully so that it doesn't break anything. It should be fine. It's pretty durable. There you go. Once you have the bottom part out, grab the sides like this and just sort of wiggle the top off. And guess what? There is that airflow impeding glass removed. Now what's behind that, you might ask? Well. Look at that. I think that looks sick right there. It's just a mesh front panel over your fans. And you do have some holes here where dust 
could potentially get in. I'm gonna have an option for that. I'm gonna try doing a little build for you guys where I make sort of a frame to cover this outside part. But in the meantime, just some electrical tape smoothly placed over here will cover all of this with a similar black finish to the paint. Now you have a very high airflow front panel. So that's gonna do it for this episode. It's very special. Uh, Christmas episode of System Integrators Weekly. Uh, if you got yourself a new PC for Christmas or someone got it for you, congratulations. Welcome to PC gaming. Uh, it's exciting. I'm excited for you. Any questions you've got, jump into the Discord. You can go to the Tech Questions channel. Be sure to add at Techie for any questions you've got. If they don't have add Techie on them, they may, may not get answered. And let us know what you need. Or you can jump into the stream. I stream every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at twitch.tv slash at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I help viewers one-on-one -on -one through a queue system. You can just type in exclamation point join to join the queue. And once we get to you, I will help you one-on-one -on -one with your own, per finding your own system for yourself, whether it's custom, pre-built, whatever. Even PC part pick picker lists. I like to do those as well if you're doing your own build and you already have a GPU. I do wanna let you guys know that this Sunday there will not be a stream. Uh, we're gonna be going out of town and uh, I'm taking a little vacation, Sunday, no stream. But uh, we're also getting this video out early, so I will see you guys on Tuesday's stream at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and until then, take care, and happy holidays. <laughs>